The tendency in many women is either to keep their true age a deep secret or lower it significantly. Now, even the worst age cynic would not give Marina Katsabukachi 45 years, but she insists she is actually 56 years old. Age is just a number. You know, it was just a number you throw somewhere. So it's, it's your choice. You can look your age if you want to. Marin is a woman of many surprises. She presents the picture of the everyday CEO who has it all. A huge paycheck, lovely home and a beautiful family. But hers is a story of hope amidst adversity. <laughs> She heads a women's rights organization, EASI, that was formed in 1996. It is a sub-region organization operating in eight countries and focuses on monitoring government's observance of women's rights. Women are empowered. They have information, they have knowledge, but they don't have finance. EASI works to help empower women economically through training and funding, especially the acquisition of equipment. Marin has worked with EASI in Uganda for the last 10 years. She is Kenyan but prefers to be called East African. She is widely traveled, especially in Africa, and has noticed a few things. Africa, our problem is that we don't appreciate what we have. We do not add value to what we have. We take what we have for granted, and then we don't patent what we have. Marin was born in South Nyanza among 11 siblings. Her father was a senator and her mother a teacher. But growing up, she did not admire her parents' professions. I thought teachers were just poor, <laughs> no poorly paid, and the work was too much. I wanted to be a lawyer when I grew up. I think politics enhances your poverty if you really don't know how to manage. And... She feels many things have to change so that the woman's role in the development of society is fully appreciated. They say that behind every successful man, there's a woman. But they should be side by side. You know, they should be looking at each other and discussing. The, man sh the woman should not be throwing ideas from behind. Marin has four daughters. The eldest is 31 and the youngest 25. But she is divorced. The marriage failed because they could not agree on many issues. Some women would stick in there because of the children, but not Marin. I say it's really stressful for the children because they are, they are not blind and they are not deaf. They can see and they can hear and it affects them mentally. And sometimes they even think of one of the parents as either being evil or being weak. Her journey as a single parent has been tough and she wouldn't want to see anyone go through her experience. Borrowing money, being in debt, wondering how to pay school fees. Marin had never been sick all her life. It was therefore shocking when one day... I fall ill slightly and I go to hospital and they tell me, oh, we are going to admit you for a checkup. The x-ray results showed she had a blocked intestine. Two weeks later, she had a biopsy which revealed that she had cancer of the colon. We came back home. I went into my room and I really cried. And that was the beginning of many nights of tears and desperation. She will never forget October 2013. Once I calmed down, I went to the internet and I read about colon cancer. And it was not nice. <laughs> it's like the most common cancer that kills people. Colon cancer affects the large intestine, the lower part of the digestive system. Like many other cancers, it is mostly a lifestyle disease and exposure increases with age. Just a few cases can be traced to genetic disorders. My father died of liver cancer and he has never even sipped a glass of beer. And um, this is something that you can get, it's hereditary, you can get it from your family. Marin sought a second opinion in Nairobi and was given the same diagnosis. She was advised to go to India for a PET scan to check the location of the tumors in the abdomen. She took out her savings and made the trip. The doctors there confirmed the diagnosis. She told me to do a certain test, that is a, a genetic test. And uh, at this time I began to realize that this treatment is not going to be cheap. Her insurance cover excluded cancer treatment. The result for the gene test for Keras was positive and she knew that the possibility of the cancer spreading was high. She needed over $30,000, approximately 80 million shillings then. She went to Kenya, called on family members and asked for help. Her children led the fundraising effort on social media and people from all walks of life, friends and strangers, responded. So they... Uh, developed a website called www.wishformama.com and 
and put my account number, their account numbers. And the money came pouring in. Somebody gave me a ticket, a whole air ticket. I could not believe it. People sent me $1,000, 1,000 euros, 1,000 pounds. Just friends of my children mostly. Six months later, she returned to India. The tests showed that while many tumors had shrunk, some were still there. She needed three more months of chemotherapy and had to find another $15,000, over 30 million shillings at the time. Cancer actually, it kills you because who can afford? They resorted to the same fundraising channels, but Marin also sent her children some jewelry she makes for them to sell abroad. The experience taught her the power of a support group. That support that people give you that I'm not, we don't want you, we don't want you to go. We don't want you to die right now. And I said, I'm not dying. In November last year, she again went to India and the report was better. Oh my God, you should have seen me. I was just alone in my room. I jumped on the bed. I screamed. I thanked the God, my God. And the report read, there is no more visible signs of cancer. Marin knows that cancer can recur, so she is observing a strict diet and an exercise regime. I have to go for checkups every three months. And I, I went for my first checkup last week, and everything was good so far. She says the experience has been humbling, and her daughters made her proud. When you have these girl children, and people look down on girl children, and then I look at what the girl children have done for me, it really makes me smile. Unlike many cancer patients, she did not lose her hair or have her nails and skin turn black during chemotherapy. She took immune boosters following a recommendation by a doctor in Kenya. So I even bought wigs. No one knew. No one knew that I had cancer. You could not tell. Marin found creative ways to continue working while in treatment. She didn't want to lose her job. She mostly worked from home but went to the office twice a week. A few weeks ago, she lost a friend to cancer. Her service was amazing. The church was packed right up to outside. And I could hear announcements. We have given 500,000, 250,000, 150,000 when she is dead. Why don't you do this when she was alive? She needed you then. Her outlook to life has changed immensely. If, if something good is happening, don't say, oh, I'm so tired, let me sit at home. No, go out and enjoy yourself. S spend your money as well. Because when you die, it's just in the bank. She says when you have cancer, do whatever it takes to live. You don't have another life. At this time, there's no shame because you're going to die if you don't do it. Humiliate yourself. Do it. And when people see you, they'll be impressed that actually this person came to me and they need help. They have guts. Here is 20 million. Josephine Karunji, NTV.